Hi, welcome back to the channel, Michelle, and today I want to share with you the things that I really like or enjoy about homeschooling because I've been doing a lot of self-reflecting lately. I think a lot of it has to do with what I've just been seeing on social media and how it's affecting me. And I, if you've seen my past few videos, you can kind of see I've been kind of critical of homeschooling lately. And someone in one of the videos mentioned that I need to keep in mind that what I'm seeing on social media represents the minority of homeschooling and not what the majority of us are doing. And I really took a pause to think about that because I'm someone that's affected greatly about you know my environment and what I'm seeing. So knowing when to step away and stop watching uh, content that's not really good for my mental health is important. But stop reflecting on uh, certain aspects and maybe start looking more at my homeschool because I do share things that I struggle with and that are hard which I think are really important especially in the homeschooling community so it's not always this pretty picture but I think it's also important to talk about the things that I really like about homeschooling that I really enjoy so that's what I'm going to talk about today so the first one, obviously, um, one of the best things for me for homeschooling is that I can tailor my child's education to meet their needs. And this can be in different ways. My seven-year-old has celiac disease, which is an autoimmune condition, and ADHD. So I'm able to provide her a safe environment So with her celiac disease. But also with her ADHD, I'm able to manipulate or change curriculum to better suit her needs. Not about changing to the next curriculum or the next best curriculum, but kind of really changing what I have to meet her needs. And the same with my oldest, who has dealt with you know perfectionists and fear of failure and things, being able to hone in on those issues. Again, it wasn't about curriculum, it was about these things. It's something we continue to work with and even um, being able to have the opportunity to have different levels for my children because they are not on the same level um, for everything. You know, my oldest excels in language arts, struggles in math. Of course, my next one is completely different, excels in uh, math, struggles with language arts, but also with just my preschooler, you know, at three and a half, he was asking to start school. So yeah, I can do that. I don't have to wait. So I can really tailor to meet their needs, which I think is the most important part of homeschooling, really, that it's about their education and what they need. And for me, homeschooling allows me to do that at this stage of life. Um, I do always give them the opportunity to return to public school because frankly, private school isn't within our budget. Public school would be the only other option for us, but they always have a say in their education, which I think is really important. But right now I'm able to meet the needs of my children, which is really great about homeschooling. Next thing I really like about homeschooling is the ability to relearn um, a lot of the subjects I didn't really <laughs> understand fully as a child, but also through the research phase of really educating myself, because I do think you have to educate yourself on things like history and math before you attempt to teach it. Um, you can't just open a book and expect that book from, you know, verbatim to tell you how to teach something. I think you really do have to take some time to educate yourself. And I'm really thankful that I've had that time because it's helped me discover a lot too, um, especially in math. I had struggled with math my entire, you know, school career and really relearning and approaching it, especially because we use dimensions math, it gives you different options to approach problems and a different perspectives on it, which is exactly what I needed in math. I was always taught the one way and you have to do it this way, but it didn't make sense to me or my brain to learn it that way. So being able, being able to approach math in different ways has really helped me realize that I'm not bad in math. I was not given a lot of opportunities to learn. And so relearning that, but also, like I said, researching. This is especially true with our history and our social justice units, um, really lo lo looking at different perspectives throughout history and learning about things that were never talked about in my public school education or in probably education in general, but really having a deep dive and understanding those things, especially from an adult perspective now, has been really amazing and I think has um, helped spur some personal growth on my part as well. So the next one is reading new books. So I think we're at a time where literature is amazing for kids. There's so many perspectives, ideas, and thoughts being put out there uh, that I wouldn't have encountered unless I was reading this with my kids. Of course, I'd be exposed to, you know, what my oldest is reading, things like that. But I don't think I would have sat down and been reading all these um, books aimed at kids if it wasn't for homeschooling. So I've come across a lot of really great books, and even though they're written for children or young adults, they still have an impact on me. And I think that's really important to have such a variety of literature you're exposed to. 
So next one would be um, one of the benefits and things I really like about homeschooling is it allows my kids more time with their dad. So if you're new to my channel, my husband is a pastor and he works really long hours. Usually, he, you know, he's gone by 8 and he'll try to be home at 4.30, but he often has meetings at 5.30 or 6 that take him out until 8. So there, as you can see, very little time. Most of the nights um, during the week, he's not home for dinner, those types of situations. And it can be difficult. And one of the reasons I chose to be a stay-at-home parent when we had children is because I knew he would be so busy with his schedule. And I wanted them to have a solid, reliable parent to always have available because I was raised by a single mother that worked a ton and that wasn't because she wanted to, it's because she had to for you know our survival. So I really wanted to be a stable force in my home environment. And having the opportunity to kind of figure our schedule, so we do the Sabbath schedule six weeks on one week off, has really allowed the opportunity for them to spend more time with dad, but also for him to be included in our homeschool. He does teach um, Wednesdays and Fridays. Wednesday morning he does go in a little later because he does service um, Wednesday night and then Friday is his normal day off. So he's able to participate and be a voice in our homeschool but also a teacher. I think that's really good um, for my kids to see that it's not just always mom doing everything. But having the ability to determine our schedule is helpful because when my oldest was in the public school, she did public school K through second grade, a lot of the breaks center around things like Easter or, or Christmas. And honestly, those are really busy times for my husband. He's not getting time off during those time periods or in the calendar year. Um, so often, even when my oldest was home from public school on breaks, he was still working a lot. Same with um, when she was home for summer, things like vacation Bible schools and different youth gatherings and things like that. A lot of that time was taken up by other things. So having this ability to kind of form our schedule so we can take time off, not during Christmas break, which is typical, but during when he would be home. So we can do more fun activities, like go to museums or zoos or spend time with each other. So that has really been one of the um, great things that I really like about homeschooling. The next one would be that, this is kind of silly, I guess, but I really enjoy going to parks and museums and zoos and not having to deal with large crowds and groups of people. One of the things I hate about summer is that when we go to the park, it's packed. But same with museums, like I like having the freedom to walk around and not have huge crowds. And again, I'm one of those people that's kind of affected by my environment, so it's very chaotic, it's very loud. It kind of um, ruins the experience for me. It's harder for me to focus on things. And I've noticed my oldest is kind of like that too. During Christmas, we went to a Five Below and it was their grand opening and it was packed and their stores aren't very big. And she was becoming um, overloaded sensory wise just with what everything was going on. So I really do like um, going to playgrounds and zoos and museums and not having to deal with a ton of people. That has been um, something I've really enjoyed. Next one is, uh, they can, I like that I can present multiple perspectives on things. So I talked about this a little bit already on math. I like that we can approach math in different ways. It's not just do or learn this, drill it, move on. It's really approaching it in different ways. And I think that's what higher level math is. It's not, you know, just plugging in the numbers, but really seeing how things are interconnected and come together. So I think that has been beneficial for both my children and I, but also things like philosophy and social justice, two subjects we do in our house have really um, given us the opportunity to see things in different ways, in different perspectives, not just be so hyper-focused on the way we see things, but especially I talked about this in a recent video, um, with my daughter reaching adolescence, teenage years, she's forming her opinions about the world. So having um, opportunities to talk about different viewpoints and ideas and thoughts really, I think, helps form her views of the world, which I think hopefully would be very open, accepting, and compassionate. But I think the ability to provide those multiple, multiple perspectives um, in her education has really helped foster that. Next would be fostering independence. This is something I really, really like about homeschooling, at least in my homeschool is uh, especially my oldest is in fifth grade, she's going to middle school next year. 
there's a lot she can do independently. There's a lot that she takes on herself. She'll get up and start her schoolwork and get going. She's usually done before the rest of us because she has that drive and ambition, but she also has ownership over her time and her schedule. And I think kind of having her have a say in that educational aspect of it has helped kind of with that because it's not something being done to her. It's not something she um, has to do, although there is an expectation in her house that this is you know, your job, this is what you're supposed to be doing. But moving from that consistency that she has really been able to foster a lot of independence. Even my seven-year-old knows the flow of the schedule and what's next, so she's able to really um, prioritize, especially with her having an ADHD diagnosis, being able to prioritize her time and focus is really important. And I've talked about this with my father-in-law, who's a public school teacher, about how in high school years, he's noticed that there's more hand-holding going on, that there's he's got to give multiple notifications to parents about a child failing and so many opportunities to make things up. And I think that the homeschooling environment when done a certain way, can definitely foster that more independence that they're able to take control more of their life and their schoolwork and really have that drive going into adulthood, knowing you know what is expected of you and what you have to do, opposed to the handholding, which don't get me wrong, that can totally happen in homeschooling too, where the parent is um, the driving force or always hand-holding through it, not letting their child uh, have that independence. That of course happens in homeschooling as well as public school as well. But in my homeschooling, I found that um, the way we do things have really fostered independence in my children and um, a good maturity level. So the next one would be, one thing I really like about homeschooling is it encourages my kids to find their passions. Because they're exposed to so much different, so many different subjects, so many different ideas, so many different perspectives, they're really able to explore what they're personally passionate about which I think is important why we not always just lead with our child's interests or passions, but really expose them to a variety of things because they don't always know what they're into until they come across it. So that's something I think we do really well in our homeschool. And something that my oldest is really passionate about is activism. She really cares about animals and the environment and she really wants to learn about climate change and what she can do as a person to help with those situations. And I think that has been fostered greatly by the resources we've used, both in um, social justice, I link up above the different things I use for that, but also history curriculum. All these things are coming together to kind of help form her passion that not everybody is treated equally, including living things like animals, the planet. So what can we do as individuals to help in those situations? So really, again, fostering that passion of hers, but showing she has power to make impactful change in those situations. So I think that's really, really interesting. And even my seven-year-old, she's seven, but she's definitely sparked interest in both science and math, and she loves to build, and that's really starting to foster some of her passion subjects. So it's really cool to see those kind of spring out of what we're learning, what they're being exposed to. And the next one, the last one is one of the things I really like about homeschooling is the elimination of busy work and it fosters critical thinking. So I think there's a lot of busy work and there can be busy work in homeschool as well. And what I consider busy work is things that aren't actually making an impact or doing anything. It's just something for your child to do um, that can be seen in different ways. I know some workbooks are just things, but I do think through the years, we've gotten better at busy work, especially coming from the public school system with my oldest. At the beginning, I was very into, she has to be able to show me on paper what she knows. And we've moved from that, that you know we can have more a discussion based, which is sometimes so much more deeper than just writing it on paper. Although I do think it is an important skill to be able to take what you know and write it down. I also think it's important to be able to create your own voice in a situation, not have that regurgitation of education, just saying what someone else believes, but really self-reflecting, figuring out what you think as an individual, which leads into the critical thinking that because of the resources we use, the discussion base, we definitely have more of a Socratic method in our house where it's not, you know, it has to be this way or that way, but what do you think? What is your approach to this? That open-mindedness of approaching different subjects and thoughts and ideas. And that's 
you know, part of our curriculum in both our social justice, our history, our philosophy, even our math approaches things in different ways, that I think we've gotten away from making sure that we are filling out every single paper or just putting things in to fill a certain requirement that, you know, the I hate to call out specific curriculum because I know there's people out there that it isn't busy work to them, but things like the little grammar workbooks. I don't think doing something repetitively every day is necessarily the going to be beneficial in every subject or every educational aspect. I think sometimes discussion and understanding and listening to one another provides a really good growth opportunity in a specific area. So I really like that we've been able to eliminate busy work. Everything we do, we do for a reason. We do it with intention. It's not just to check a box. It's both, It's hitting a specific area that we need to hit, but it's also, again, fostering that critical thinking, many ways to approach things, many perspectives. It's not right or wrong. And I think that's an overarching theme that we've really encountered in our homeschooling is um, how we approach things and what do we think. It's not what I think as the parent or the educator. I really want my kids to have a voice and an opinion and understand that that voice and opinion is powerful and impactful. And that is something that is really, I really enjoy seeing in my homeschool and again, seeing foster through my children. And I do get glimpses of that every now and then. I made a video about that um, recently, I'll link up above, but I'm starting to see those glimpses of the impact this education is having on them. And it's really great. So those are some of the things I really like and enjoy about homeschooling. I would love if you put down in the comments something you really like about homeschooling. I'd love to read those different comments and think about what everybody else is doing and what's impactful to them. So if you have any questions about anything I said, leave them in the comments below. If not, thank you for watching.